rather large. Oh my god. <laughs> That's all right. It seems so narrow, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs>The sudden change from peaceful River Waz to Hectic River Seine was alarming. Andrassy is not far from Conflans saint honorine where the Waz flows into the Seine. It is the so-called inland waterway capital of France, with moorings, yards and floating dry docks. We turned right, heading down river away from Paris, and waited half an hour for the lock to be clear of commercial traffic. There are two locks side by side, and the largest had just cleared a huge double barge heading upstream. Our tiny boat, going downstream, was swamped by this vast grand ecluse. At nearly two rugby pitches in length and 10 London buses wide, we felt very small. Making good way with the flow of the river, we passed the Peugeot car factory, small islands, stunning riverside homes and, unusually for this trip, navigation markers too. The ancient 13th century bridge at Poissy had water mills built upon it, but was bombed twice in the Second World War, so now only a ruin remains. In 1214, Louis IX was born in Poissy and inherited the throne in 1226. Disease took his life during the Seventh Crusade in 1270, and he was canonized in 1297 to settle favor with the monarchy. He became Saint Louis. Cruising along with the flow of the sleepy waters, our destination for the day at Nouvelle Marina Saint Louis came into view, bringing high hopes for a winter mooring. We were warned that the marina was a bit run down and close to places with a high crime rate, but before leaving, we needed fuel. It is a bit of a graveyard for boats. Well, this was one of the places we'd considered for overwintering. However, having spent a night here and seen what it's actually like, we just don't think it's the right place for our baby. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what did you think of the toilets? Oh my god. <laughs> Samantha would have died. <laughs> like God for baby wipes. <laughs> oh dear me. With a full tank, we made our way back onto the river, heading further away from our intended direction of Paris. This would be the first time that we would leave options for winter, and we needed to feel sure that the winter mooring would be safe, secure, and well cared for. On the way through, we called into Basse de Loisir, but found that they were full for winter and carried on heading west through Val de Seine. Val de Seine, quite pretty really. Pusher units are not very streamlined. They're really just pushing the water. But he's pushing it faster than we are. I knew we were getting closer to our last chance before leaving France to go back home. With Limay and Mount Le Jolie behind us, our eyes were peeled for the small entrance to the old quarry. We moored up, visited the office and booked options in for the winter. We had traveled a day further away from Paris than we wanted to, but the disappointment we felt to the last marina melted away when the narrow entrance opened onto a beautiful nature reserve at Port Elon.
In three weeks since Ramsgate, we had crossed the English Channel, replaced the mast, handled 40 locks, two tunnels, and traveled nearly 500 kilometers. Our focus was on preparing options for the possibility of a freezing and wet winter in the water. But we still had to eat and provisioning required a long walk to the nearest village. Beautiful afternoon. Ready to go? Mm -hmm. Let's go. There are still working quarries nearby and a loading berth in the lake, but the old diggings have been turned over to nature, allowing natural beauty to return and thrive. The autumn weather was kind and the mini market satisfied our immediate needs for provisions. Although we were eating through any of the onboard food due to go out of date during the winter. Next day, free to use bikes at the marina allowed us to explore further afield, stumbling upon wild walnuts and sweet chestnuts. Although the marina is safe and pleasant, there isn't a chandler, restaurant or shop. Our engine needed new oil, so I cycled to Limay and Mantle Jolly, which was about a 12 mile round trip. It was good to be back on two wheels again, although the sit-up and beg style bike was a bit heavy and clunky. Back at the marina, Sheena was battling with a broken washing machine and cleaning the boat ready for closing her up. The next day was devoted to resealing the deck fittings, engine oil change and winterizing prior to leaving our pride and joy for six months. Truthfully, I didn't really want to leave. The morning of our departure was frantic. Vacuum pack all fabrics and books, lift mattresses and seat cushions, remove batteries, clear sanitary and domestic water pipes, set up small heaters and a dehumidifier to be safe, remove all outside items into the tent and check all the mooring lines. That done, we could lock up and leave our boat, hoping she would still be there afloat on our return. Time now for a taxi to the rail station, a train to Paris, then onward to London, Doncaster and Hull. We'd sailed options 850 nautical miles from Hull in 42 days, and now it was time for us to return home. We expected to see options again six months after leaving her in Port Elon. Little did we know how that expectation would be dashed against the rocks. I'll be heading back on the motorbike.